Firstly, allow me to briefly explain the rules of this class trial. The results of the class trial will be decided solely by your votes. If you manage to correctly identify the blackened, only they will receive punishment. But should you vote incorrectly, everyone except for the blackened will be punished, and they will be able to escape this field trip of mutual killing. Now then, you may begin at your discretion. So we're looking for the person who killed Kokoro. Where are we even supposed to start? I'm already totally lost. If you would all be so kind as to lend me your ears, there is something I must tell you before we begin. I don't have a clue what happened, honestly. Please don't ignore me. You've got some nerve talking to us, Mikado. Is it just me? Or is my existence beginning to receive less and less acknowledgement? I've said this before, yet it seems I have no choice but to repeat myself. Although you may ignore me in everyday life, it would be unwise to ignore me during trials. I for one did my fair share of investigation, and it would do me no greater joy than to assist you all in the solving of this case. Leave us alone, will you? No, he has a point. We probably should listen to Mikado. Are you sure that's okay? It's not like Mikado can afford to let us lose the class trial. Considering all our lives, his included, are on the line. Every testimony is important, even if it's coming from a loser like him or a liar like Shobai. Ugh, you're something else, Miss Sora. But more importantly, he could be the Blackened. And even if he's nothing but an ugly, worthless piece of scum who's no better than a rotting piece of inedible garbage, there's the smallest chance he might have found an important piece of evidence. Oh dear, my poor broken heart. If Sora said so, then I guess it's fine. Seeing that it's come to this, I present you all my ultimate piece of evidence which will undoubtedly restore your value trust in me. Ultimate piece of evidence? What, did you already solve it? Well, no, not yet. But I... Uh, shut up already! We can't afford to get off track! Yeah. Like Ra, Ra said, I guess we shouldn't completely ignore him, but I doubt he'll be of any use, so... Let's just keep going for now, okay? Starting from the top, I think we should go over everything we know so far. That's what Coco would have done. Yeah. Without Koro, we have nobody to rely on but ourselves. Don't worry, sis. I'm here for you. Cheer up, you guys. We can do this. For Kokoro. Uh, alrighty then. <laughs> So, uh, what we know about the case so far? Let's see. I mean, it's easier said than done. I'm not even sure how we're supposed to start. Why don't we talk about what everyone was doing before we discovered the body? So, we found the dead body right around lunchtime. Sora, Teria, and I went to Kokoro's room to bring her lunch like always. But Kokoro didn't answer. So naturally, we started to get worried. And that's when I heard you guys and came over, right? Once you guys told me what was going on, I went and got Monocro to open the door for us. And when we went in, Kokoro was... That would mean that Kokoro died once No, that's wrong! No, Shinji. We can't be sure of that. W why not? Just because we found the body during lunchtime doesn't mean Kokoro died around that time. Even the monocrophile says so. The time of death is unknown. 
Speaking of which, the Monaco file this time around isn't very helpful, is it? Probably because she was frozen. Even professionals have a hard time determining the time of death when it comes to frozen bodies. Uh, um, but if the time of death is unknown, then doesn't that mean that there's still a chance she really did die around lunchtime? I suppose we can't rule out the possibility, but it's probably pretty low. Then I guess we should be talking about when Kokoro really died. Wait, do we really need to? I thought it was obvious who the killer was. Wait, what? Nikkei, you already figured it out? Who is it? Who's the Blacken? Yoriko Kabuya. Need I say more? Huh? Y Yoriko's the culprit? Wait, not this again! Why am I always the one getting pinned for this stuff? But aren't you the one who brought Kokoro breakfast? If she was dead by lunchtime, then it sounds to me like that's the only opening for someone to get a stab at her. What? He certainly has a point. If she was alive during the breakfast visit, but dead by the time Miss Sora's assemblage stopped by... Then obviously, whichever group was the last to check in to deliver breakfast is the most suspicious. And what do you know? That would be none other than Miss Kabuya. Wait, but I was with Teruya the entire time! How do you possibly expect me to kill her with someone else there? She's right. The whole point of me joining every visit was to make sure nobody'd try and take advantage of Kokoro's vulnerability. So that'd mean you're in the same boat. What? You're implying... he served as our accomplice? But there isn't even any benefit to working as an accomplice. And we know Teria is in a void, so he's got no reason to kill anyone in the first place. Can we really be so sure about that? Yeah, the chances of him being a void are low, but it's not like they're zero. Remember, Mikado of all people was the one who brought him here. To be honest, I always thought the whole, yeah, let's just put all our trust in a total stranger thing was ridiculous. That's insane! I was kidnapped! You're one to talk, Nikkei. Constantly accusing others doesn't automatically make you innocent. Fine, then let's turn this around. If it wasn't those two working together, then when is the murder possibly supposed to have taken place? Sure, there isn't any incentive for accomplices, but Monocro didn't outright deny the possibility. You... Guys, say something! Yuko, I know how you feel, but he does have a point. What? We need to discuss this more, but... suspecting me again. Considering the order, that breakfast visit was the only possible window for murder. I was with her, and she didn't do anything suspicious. Like Nick said, there is a possibility of you two being accomplices. Miss Mitsume ate her meals up until last night. And the body was found this lunch. So if something happened to Miss Mitsume, it would have been during this morning. These two also don't have alibis in the first place. No, that's wrong! Sorry, Nikkei, but I won't let you badger Yoriko again like this. Sora! Yoriko has an alibi. After the trip with Teria, she went straight to the village to practice cooking. Yeah. When there was no answer, we left the meal on her doorstep. As soon as that was done, she told me she was going to continue practicing her cooking at the village. <laughs> you got any evidence to back that up? Well, well, I did meet a few on the way there. Oh, I saw her. You were cooking some stew, right? There are plenty of witnesses, Nikkei. If what Yoriko says is true, then there would have been no time for murder. All right, then we can excuse Yoriko. But what about Teruya? He entered Kokoro's room every visit. There could have been plenty of chances for him to kill her. Kokoro said she'd only open the door when two or more people came to visit her. Thus, under normal circumstances, if anyone entered Kokoro's room to kill her, then we're dealing with more than one culprit. Now that Yoriko's alibi has been confirmed, 
it would have been impossible for Terrier to kill Kokoro on his own. Thus, the theory of Yuriko and Terrier being accomplices is disproven. Your argument is full of gaps! No, that alone isn't going to suffice as a valid alibi. The evidence in Kokoro's room supports that. Sorry, but as a journalist, it's my job's instinct to pursue every last detail of what I find suspicious. Allow me to present you with this evidence. Let's see if you can retaliate against the ultimate journalist's latest scoop. So, as for the director, Yoriko went to the village. That much I can understand, but she could have easily killed her then and there before fleeing soon after. She visited Kokoro with Terry and with the intent to kill her. Then she split so that she'd have a witness for her alibi. You saw the state of the body, didn't you? It was frozen solid. Could Yoriko have done such a feat in such a short span of time? It'd be impossible for Yoriko to do that and immediately leave for the village. Nope. There's a way that she could have frozen Kokoro instantly. The room says it all. I'll pierce through those words! No, that doesn't add up. There's no way Yoriko used liquid nitrogen to freeze Kokoro. What are you talking about? We all saw an empty container of it in her room, plain as day! If she really used that to freeze Kokoro, then there should have been traces left behind in the room. But other than her corpse, we didn't find a single trace of anything else being frozen. Right, Setsuka? Yup. No traces mean that the liquid nitrogen was probably never used. Maybe she could have frozen Koro in some other room before bringing her back in? That had taken a significant amount of time. Nikkei's proposition was that the crime could have been done within a short amount of time. If Yoriko, our supposed murderer, had taken time moving the body like that, then it would be impossible to arrive at the village as early as she did. So Yoruko and Teruya are innocent? That's what I've been saying since the start. I know that from an opportunity standpoint, we're suspicious. But don't you think you're being a bit cruel, Nikkei? Heh. <laughs> hey! What's with that attitude, Nikkei? You owe these two an apology! Now, now. Fighting won't get us anywhere. Since Ravro's cleared up our suspicion on Terry and Yuko, let's get back to the case. If not for freezing, then what was the liquid nitrogen for? After all, since we found the container in her room, we can easily assume it must have been used for something, correct? No, that's probably a red herring. A red herring? But the label on the drum clearly said liquid nitrogen on it. Right, the label, but nothing else. I'm saying that they probably just stuck that label onto an empty container. Look at it closer. It's slanted. Slightly, as if hastily slapped on. I'm willing to bet there was never any liquid nitrogen inside that container at all. Wait, then how did Kokoro get frozen? It must be the Yukiona's curse after all! There's no other way that a person would suddenly freeze! It's probably the refrigerator. The refrigerator? The, the culprit froze Kokoro with a refrigerator? Well, 
Excluding the liquid nitrogen, it's the only thing left capable of freezing someone. But... Is there any proof that the refrigerator was used? Got it! I noticed the refrigerator divider in Kokodo's room was a bit loose. Perhaps it's because the culprit had taken the divider out to fit Kokoro in, then placed it back when she'd been frozen. Miss Mitsume is quite small, so if they squeezed her right in, I'm sure that she'd fit rather nicely. Squeeze in? W watch your words! There is also the fact that her refrigerator was set to instant freeze mode. For those of you who use that setting, I'm sure you can agree it's definitely powerful enough to freeze a human being. Wait, even if the output was set to instant freeze, there's a big difference between freezing some leftovers and freezing a whole human being. We're not talking about mild frostbite here. The monochro file says that she was frozen to the point where all her cells suffered from necrosis. If she was frozen that badly, that means the culprit must have left her in for at least a whole day. Huh? Wait, that means Coco would have been in there since yesterday's lunchtime. Yuki, when you were there with me and Turuya delivering Kokoro her meal, there was no answer, right? Y yeah, but Yoriko said that the dinner was gone that night. That doesn't make sense. Maybe Vuko is lying? Why would I lie about something like that? If your refrigerator theory is correct, that means Kokoro should have been inside the refrigerator last supper. I swear, if Yoriko really is the culprit... Wait, hold your horses! Yoriko never visited Kokoro yesterday, so she wouldn't have had the chance to enter her room. Then who delivered breakfast yesterday? Me, Roha, and Teria. And you met up with Kokoro? Yup! We had a really nice chat with her. Kokoro even wrote ha <laughs> on her iPad. Oh, those were the days. That means she was alive up until that point, at least. Who was there for lunch? Me, Hanade, Gigi, and Ruru. And did you guys meet Kokoro? Of course. She complained about four people being too many. Wait, this is getting a bit too complicated. Can somebody summarize it? Roha, can you give me a piece of paper from your sketchbook? Uh, okay. If we summarize what we've discussed so far, this is our result. Tetsuka, your drawing's adorable! Oh, and you drew such a good summary, too! I hereby dub you the Taking Notes Master. Or would it be Mistress? Miss Chiabukuro, which do you prefer? I'd prefer it if you stopped focusing on the drawings and instead focused on the timeline of events. Looking at this, we can confirm Kokoro hasn't answered her door since yesterday evening. That means something definitely happened between those two visits. Does that mean the visitors right before then? The Shinji, Teruya, and the twins are all one big culprit? What? Why are we the culprits? And how would that even work? I doubt that four people were accomplices. Especially when the chances of there being even one accomplice are close to zero. But according to Yuki, that gap between lunch and dinner was the only period of time she could have been killed in. Wait, that's impossible. Haven't we already discussed that the only time we could have entered her room was to deliver meals? That was a rule she personally set. And I definitely saw her dinner had disappeared. So she couldn't have been dead by then, right? But if Coco were still alive last night, there wouldn't have been enough time to freeze her. I-I have no idea what we're talking about anymore. According to this theory, none of us could have killed Kokoro. To even get close to her, they obviously needed to first enter her room, and if it wasn't during our visits... Admittedly, I think the refrigerator is the root of this problem. Determining how one would have access to it is what's brought us to a dead end. No, it must be the refrigerator. Considering the liquid nitrogen was just a red herring, it becomes the only tool capable of freezing Kokoro. There is no alternative. But if we could have only entered her room during lunchtime, then... Damn, this really is a locked room mystery. <sighs> this is hard. Can I use a hint coin? I... I still don't know what we just discussed. I got it! It's the Yukiona! Monoko, we need to stop the trial right now before it's too late! This isn't a murder, it's a curse! And the class trial, you say? 
<laughs> I don't mind at all, but I assume that means you've given up on finding the culprit. Well, that's not... I mean, does a culprit exist in the first place? It seems like it's impossible for everyone, so... Is there anything that could point us towards the culprit? We just need a small push in the right direction. Guess I gotta help you out. The culprit exists. This is a case where if you think about the method first, it's more difficult. So, let's put the method aside for now and focus on the culprit's identity first. The evidence pointing towards the culprit. You already know, Sora. I know you have what it takes to solve this. And don't worry, I'll help you out. The murder method is still a mystery. But there was a clue pointing towards the culprit at the crime scene, Kokoro's final moments. The final clue that Kokoro left with her dying breaths. That clue clearly points out the real culprit. You remember now, right, Sora? I agree with that. That's it. The dying message. A dying message that Kokoro had left. If we decipher that, we can figure out who the culprit is. Bingo! Well done, Sora! The dying what now? The dying message. You usually see victims leave them behind right before they die, hinting towards their killer's identity. But Rara, you're saying Coco left one herself? Yes, the icicles inside the refrigerator. They look like normal icicles, but if you look closely, there are letters written on each one. It looks like someone carved them with their nails. Presumably Kokoro's. What? F? O? Look, two of them are stuck together. It looks like the bigger one is penetrating the smaller one. Um, so the icicles killed Kokoro? I, I don't... Aren't dying messages supposed to be something obvious? This feels more like some secret code or something. It's actually rather simple. I've already figured out the culprit by using this. What? Kanade, you know who the culprit is? Who is it? Instead of outright telling you, let me explain through this dying message. But we don't know what it means. Miss Kanade, we are inclined to hear your explanation. Of course. Once you learn the identity of the killer, the method should come naturally. Now, while these initially look like a random series of icicles, the important thing to note is that there are exactly eight of them. Furthermore, the letters F and O have been carved into each end of them. Six of them stand separately. But like Nikkei pointed out, one has penetrated another, conjoining the two. And that specific icicle is different from the others. Instead of O, it has the letter I carved into it. Okay, so... F stands for female. There are eight icicles and eight of us. O stands for others. Oh, uh, so I literally stands for I, as in myself? Yep. I guess you aren't as stupid as you look, Yuki. With the rest all having O on them, one of the remaining seven can be seen penetrating I. Considering that it was Kokoro who made this, I would represent herself. Meaning we can interpret this message to mean One of the seven girls killed me. Whoa, so the culprit is a female? Alright, so we know their gender. So what? This alone doesn't pinpoint the culprit at all. It just tells us that the killer is a girl. Well, if you'd let me finish, Nikkei, I was about to say we can take one step further to deduce the killer's identity as well. What do you mean? Look carefully at the icicles. It's easy to overlook, but the O icicle that penetrated the I icicle is significantly longer than the other ones. Uh-oh! But didn't we just deduce that these icicles were us girls? If one's taller than the rest, wouldn't it make sense for their length to be analogous to our heights? We don't even know what that word means! 
One moment, Miss Conaday. Are you proposing that the tallest female present is our killer? It can only be you! The tallest out of the female students. That's... Emma Magarobi. Are you the killer? What? Emma, the person that the dying message is referring to, it has to be you. What? Sora, have you forgotten who Emma is? Why would she, of all people, kill Kokoro? I don't know exactly. I just solved the dying message just like Kanade told me to. If the tallest person out of the girls is the culprit, then that would be Emma, right? Yeah, but still. S Sora, how could you? Losing Kokoro is painful enough. Yet I'm desperately trying to find her killer. And you have the nerve to say I killed her? That's crossing the line. If this is some sick and twisted joke, let me make it clear to you that I'm not laughing. Rara, even if the dying message coincides with M's height, don't you think this is a bit... I mean, it was no secret M regarded Coco as her best friend. You saw how upset she was when we found her body. Yeah, sorry Sora, but I can't get behind that. This feels more coincidental than incriminating. Maybe our interpretation of the dying message was just wrong? Seriously? Are you all really that stupid? Whoa! Dial down the aggression a bit, huh? My interpretation is 100% accurate. Didn't I just say that once we determine the culprit's identity, the rest falls into place? Trust me, if you assume Emma's the killer, this case becomes much simpler. Kanade. I know you think you're helping, but I assure you, I... Yeah, come on, Kanade. You're being mean to Emmy. There's no way that Emmy would ever... Sister? How about shutting the hell up while I'm talking? If you don't plan on being useful, be a good sister and stay out the way, okay? <laughs> Kanade? Ho <laughs> ho ho. It seems to me that Miss Kanade has already solved the case. I don't know, are we sure about that? Looks to me like Miss Little Sis is getting a bit deluded. <laughs> <laughs> deluded? Oh, you poor naive chump. Kanade? What's wrong? Oh, Sora. Yes? You alone believed my reasoning, right? Since these gaggle of imbeciles can't tell the difference between their asses from their elbows, why don't you try figuring out how Emma did all this? If you're lost, I can give you a hint. Emma's talent. Her ultimate talent is the key to this.
makes sense. Emma's talent. With the talent of Ultimate Actress, wouldn't it be possible for her to act as someone else? What do you mean? Up until now, we'd written up this case as impossible, with no way of entering Kokoro's room and each of us having alibis for that period of time. However, one person did have access, Kokoro herself. But what if the Kokoro we met was in fact not the actual Kokoro? What? What if Emma was disguised as Kokoro? And if the real Kokoro was already dead, then suddenly the murder becomes much more possible. That's... You mean the Kokoro we'd been meeting with all this time was actually Emma? B but Sora, first you besmirch my friendship. Now you wish to besmirch my talent, too. No, it's not... What's your deal? Why are you suddenly hell-bent on making me this evil psychopath? Calm down, Em. I know how you feel, but... Calm down? I just lost my best friend, and yet Sora thinks it's okay to suggest I was the one who killed her? No, I think I'm entitled to feel a little betrayed. All I want is to let Kokoro rest in peace. <laughs> and yet... <laughs> No, I didn't mean to. Sora, don't you think you're going a bit too far with this? Yeah, I honestly can't see Emma killing Kokoro. It just wouldn't make any sense. Let's retrace our steps and go back over what we know. Maybe Kanade made a mistake somewhere. Me? Made a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> what a disappointment! I never expected you all to share a single digit IQ like my sister. To think I could easily die if you had Foot's vote wrong. Disgusting. You! How dare! Hmm? Strange. I could have sworn I told you to be quiet, Hibiki. Let Kanade do all the work and solve this case. Can you not even understand something as simple as that? Always so useless. Can't do anything yourself. Always relying on me to clean up your shit. You should know your place by now. Kanade! Why? You're so scary! Um, okay. Ignoring the nightmare fuel for a second. I also kind of think it's unfair to accuse Emma as a killer just because some icicles in her love of acting. No. I'll believe Kanade and Sora's reasoning. Oh, me too, me too! That speech was so moving it lit a fire within my heart. Too much! This is all too much! Ho oh, ho! Simmer down, everyone, simmer down! The class trial room is a sacred place where the only permitted battles are ones of wit. Thus, any conflict must be resolved through a formal debate. Together, so I had no time to disguise myself. Kanade! How can you say always when you weren't with us the whole 24 hours? If Em's the killer, there's no need for something as complex as a disguise. Kanade! If you all hear my reasoning, then you'll understand why she had to use a disguise. The Kokoro we met was definitely the real Kokoro. 
Wouldn't it be tough to act like somebody else so perfectly? This one's mine! To act is her ultimate talent, isn't it? Even if she had perfectly imitated the appearance, she couldn't have imitated her voice. Yuki! We couldn't even hear Kokoro's voice thanks to the disease. That's not a problem. Kokoro and Emma have different heights. Wouldn't it be hard to disguise as one another? This one's mine! Kokoro didn't get out of bed. We had no chance of checking her height. Even so, this case isn't closed without a way to enter her room. Mikado! The way to enter her room may exist, just yet to be discovered. Wait, wait. We're just going in circles here. We won't make any progress like this. Oh, people. I never expected you to be this cruel, Sora. Why are we even still discussing this? If my reasoning sound... Which it is, mind you. It becomes pretty obvious that Emma's tears are about as real as her fake-ass accent. Anna! I know you're confident in your reasoning, but there's no need to be so rude. Okay, fine. It doesn't seem like they're going to drop the topic, so I'll play along for now. Let's assume that the disguise is possible. So what? It doesn't matter how much one looks like another. Without a means of getting inside her room, Kanade's reasoning becomes entirely nonsensical. Girl's got a point. Only Kokoro could get inside her own room. Each dorm door could only be opened by its respective owner. That crafty crow created a contraption that not even the craziest of characters could coerce completely, correct? I'm pretty sure we were all told that back when this game started. Yeah. Right now, we still haven't overcome the biggest obstacle of getting into her room. Well, the killer had to have entered her room at least once before murdering her. Hmm. There were only three chances for us to enter her room. You mean during the meal deliveries, right? Do you see now? The notion of a disguise has caused our discussions to become circular. Ergo, it might behoove us to disregard it. <laughs> what are you talking about, everyone? We definitely had the chance. Why? It was when we entered Kokoro's room without her permission, of course. You mean we entered her room without asking her permission? When do you mean we entered Kokoro's room without her permission? Have you forgotten? After our performance, when she suddenly collapsed. In order to gain admittance, we used her e-handbook plus to open the door. Right. And we needed her fingerprints to unlock said e-handbook plus for it to work. But Kokoro was still alive at that point. So what if we went inside? What if somebody took advantage of the confusion and stole her e-handbook plus once inside? And what if they left the room with her e-handbook plus? No, that's wrong! Hold on, Kanade. We can't know that for sure yet. Excuse me? I'll admit. It's true that if somebody had stolen Kokoro's e-handbook plus, they could have entered the room freely. That is, unless the auto power saving function was on. Auto power saving function? You mean the function that automatically turns off the e-handbook plus after it's left alone for a certain amount of time? Even if somebody stole Kokoro's e-handbook plus, like Kanade suggests, if the e-handbook plus ever turned off, it'd be impossible to turn it back on again without Kokoro's input. Couldn't the culprit have just kept touching it to ensure it never turned off? That isn't possible. While you may be able to use the e-handbook pluses of your fellow students for mundane means, 
The auto power saving function shares the same recognition algorithm with turning your e-handbook plus on, which, as you all know, only reacts to the owner's fingerprints. Why, you! You're just spouting long words that I don't understand! Essentially, the e-handbook plus would power down unless Coco herself was touching it. It's as everyone else says, Kanade. Without knowing that fact for certain, we cannot continue with your line of reasoning. <laughs> everyone, this may sound sudden, but can I ask you all something? What is it now? Iroha has continually insisted that Kokoro was killed by the Yukiona's curse. Right? Yes? So? And what was it that made you think it was the curse? Because... Yukiona is known to freeze the one she hates and take their hands and feet. And that's what happened to Kokoro, right? That's right. Iroha came to that conclusion specifically because Kokoro's corpse was missing her hands and feet. Of course, she was also dumb enough to believe it was actually a curse to kill her, but... Who says I'm dumb? And just why are you bringing this up? You're not actually going to tell me you believe it was the curse too, are you? Hardly. But it begs the question, doesn't it? If it wasn't the curse, then why did the killer choose such a cumbersome method of murdering? To do... try and scare everyone? Wrong again, Hibiki. Please think before you talk. This is obviously a copycat crime. To give off the impression it was the curse. When in actuality, the killer had a specific reason to do this. A copycat crime? W what's that? It's exactly how it sounds. The case was specifically set up to imitate a past crime. Kanade suggesting Kogoro's death was carried out in a way that mimics the legend of Yukiona. But why would the killer do that? It's obvious! It was to cover up the trick of this locked room murder. As Sora and Mikado have proven, Kokoro's e-handbook plus would only have responded to her own fingerprints. No matter how hard they tried, the built-in algorithms would have prevented the culprit from turning the e-handbook plus back on. So... What if the killer had Kokoro's fingerprints? Huh? <laughs> Got it! You think they cut them off? The killer cut off Kokoro's hands so they could easily have access to her fingerprints. Explain it, though. We all just thought it resembled elements of the Yukiana's curse. While in actuality, the culprit did it to get her fingerprints. Hold on. You're seriously insinuating the killer carried around a severed hand just to turn on the e-handbook plus? How could such a feat be remotely possible? Not only would they have to hide it, but they'd also have to consider the blood and the smell. Not to mention, if they just wanted her fingerprints, why did they also cut her feet off? Who said they carried all her hands and feet? All they needed was her fingerprint. A fingertip would have sufficed. Then why did they cut them all off? Because if she was only missing one finger, it would have been much easier to infer that they were after a fingerprint. Besides, we only know the state of Coco's body post-discovery. It's possible the killer only carried a fingertip, then cut the rest off not long before we found her body to throw us off. That's what she wanted to say, right, Kana? Took you all long enough? Yes, that's exactly what I'm suggesting. It's a theory, nothing more. There's no evidence suggesting such. Nor would someone do such laborious tasks just for one fingertip. No, there is evidence. At the time of the body discovery, Kokoro's body had just begun to melt and bleed. But there was also a dry blood stain on the bed. At the time, it didn't make sense. This is all moving so fast. What did the blood mean then? It means she'd bled prior to us showing up. The dry blood stain was left behind after the killer took her fingertip. Like Setsuka said, the imitation of the curse was nothing more than a red herring. The second island had a great motif of Yukiona's tail. It makes sense the killer would use it to distract us all. Honestly, I tip my hat to you, dear killer. So how about it? Are we now willing to agree it was possible to enter the room? Well, it certainly does explain how Emma could have entered Kokoro's room while disguised as her. Oh, but wait, there's more! On the night Kokoro collapsed, 
The last one to come out of her room was... Da 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 da! Emma Magarobi! Okay, and? If she was the last to leave, she could have stolen the e-handbook plus without being noticed by anyone else. Emma, you didn't, did you? It's just as Kanade said. By determining the killer first, and then retracing our steps with the information that gave us, we've been able to solve what we couldn't before. Okay, so if we combine what we just learned with what we knew earlier... The killer swept her e-handbook plus while we were placing her in her room. Then, after everyone went to bed, they rushed back to Kokoro's room before the e-handbook plus switched off. It's possible that the real and fake Kokoro were swapped then too. And then, to make sure that they had free reign to her e-handbook plus, they cut her finger off and locked her in the refrigerator. Oh! And that ties into the refrigerator trick we discussed. How splendid. By working together, we've solved all the questions from earlier. Access to the locked room, the time needed to freeze the body, and the alibi issue. Wait a moment. Are we forgetting something? The school rules specifically state that losing your e-handbook plus is prohibited. If Watcher's suggesting it's true, surely Kokura would have been punished for losing hers, would she not? Not really. Stealing it and losing it are two very different things. And besides, school rules tend to make an exception for murder. Seriously? That's a thing? Oh, she's right. Monocro said so when we tried opening Kokoro's door, right before we discovered the body. school rules, there was another one the killer violated for this case. You mean, the vandalism? Wow, Yuki! There may be a brain in there after all! Vandalism? Mind explaining for us, Yuki? Don't you remember, Big Bro? The day after the performance, you said you'd noticed that the museum's Yukiana statue had been broken while out on a morning jog. Oh yeah! Well, we talked about vandalism then, too! But we all thought it was strange that Monocro hadn't punished anyone for it, when in actuality... Yup, it was part of the trick. In order to help create the illusion of Yukiona's curse, the culprit destroyed the statue to make it seem as if it had awoken. Well, that may be one reason, certainly. Though I think the culprit had a different idea in mind. As we all know now, the crux of this case is the killer's disguise. Makeup can be used to mask the skin color. Stealing their clothes helps the appearance. But what about the hair? Got it! The dressing room. She took a wig from the dressing room inside the museum. Right again. Well, yeah, there was loads of wigs in the dressing room. But none of them looked like Kokoro's hair, right? Iroha, do you remember the costume party we held on the first night we arrived at the second island? Party? Oh, yeah, I remember. And do you remember who helped style our hair at that time? Huh? Oh! Oh! It was Emma! But wait, what does the wig have to do with the broken Yukiona statue? Got it! It's probably because of the dressing room item list. What's... that? Oh yeah, I saw that too. It's a list that details the amount of stock for each item in the dressing room. 
how many weeks there are, how many variations of clothing there are, things like that. If the killer had taken a wig to disguise themselves as Kokono, then the numbering on the list wouldn't match the actual stock. So to cover that, they destroyed the statue and took the hair part to fill up the inventory. Whoa, they went to all that effort for just one wig? Who'd notice something as small as that? Given how crucial the disguise was to the plan, I imagine they must have been hyper-vigilant and paranoid about keeping it hidden at all costs. And as a matter of fact, their meticulousness was not in vain. A certain someone here took the time to memorize the whole list and cross-reference it with its stock every single day. What? Who could be that perverted? Uh, no, that was never my intent. I'm a merchant, remember? Uh, oh, right. I'm sorry. A long time ago, I made a mistake in taking inventory, which resulted in something irreversible. I can't remember the details, but I swore to be thorough from then on. But even despite that, memorizing inventories is nothing new for me. As a merchant, I can't stand not knowing exact quantities of the stock. Even with Teria making daily rounds, not even he noticed a wig disappearing. At a glance, it looks like the killer was being overly paranoid, when in reality, Doing exactly that was what stopped Terrya from noticing discrepancy. The killer really was one step ahead of everyone. The other tell was the small amount of rubble from the statue in one of the wigs. That tiny detail is what led us down this path. Still, we would never have come up with the disguise idea without Kanade's help. No, I was just able to look outside the box. That's all. Well, well, well. It seems our killer has finally been unveiled. Um. Emma, y you really? Emma, if you really are the killer, then please, make this easy for us and confess now. I don't want to keep having to doubt you like this. Are you... truly that desperate to paint me as the killer? You've insulted my friendship with Kokoro. Used my ultimate talent against me and created this elaborate theory. And now, you want me to confess to killing the closest friend I ever had? Have you not caused me enough pain already? Emmy, don't cry. I'd rather not believe any of this either. But the more I hear and the longer this goes on, even I have to wonder about the legitimacy of those tears. Well, they don't call her the ultimate actress for nothing. Don't know about the intent, but those tears seem genuine to me. Eh, this is all too much. I feel so useless. If we vote an innocent person as the Black End, then everyone but the Black End is killed, right? Fine. Have it your way. Go ahead and sentence us all to death. What do you mean? I've already told you. I'm not the killer. Kanade and Sora may have crafted an elaborate theory, but like I said, I didn't do it. So if you roll me, we'll all die. Whoever did this is setting me up. The real killer. They want you to think I did it. Please, you have to believe me. You're still acting innocent? Ugh, this is just pathetic at this point. All the evidence is pointing towards you. Sora... You remember what you said, don't you? If Kokoro hadn't died, perhaps my sincerity would have attracted her into her party. Yes, I wanted to be her friend. She may have not reciprocated it, but I genuinely cared for her from the bottom of my heart. If I die here, I won't be able to face Kokoro in the afterlife knowing I let her kill her get away. Uh, wait! Could it be? Yes. I think I may have found the key that shall turn this case around. Please, give me one more chance. There is still time. Time to prove to you that I, Emma Magorobi, am not the killer. I beg of you, please believe me. Allow me to point out the contradiction in your reasoning. It's just the one, mind you. One minor flaw in such lengthy reasoning. But this will prove my innocence. And with it, change your mind. So you're 
saying that the Cockroaches have gotten Kokoro's e Honda Plus at the performance, right? With the e Honda Plus, the Cockroaches must have finished their preparations and gotten ready for the impersonation. According to you, it was during that night that the Cockroach went to the museum. There was lots to do, such as setting up the disguise and destroying the statue before morning time. But that night, I was there with all of you to hear the next announcement. Since the main gate had already been closed, I had no way to get out of the mountain. I'll pierce through those words! It's possible to get out of the Monocruise after the door is locked at night. What? Sora, are you just doing this for fun now? It is a proven fact that... It was a proven fact. While it may have been impossible on the first island, things have changed since then. And you can now get out through the balcony on the fourth floor hallway. Oh, that's right. The balcony's door was opened while you we were sailing to this current island. But the fourth floor of the monocruise is pretty high up, isn't it? If she jumped out at that height... Then what if she didn't jump? What if she had a rope-like thing to climb down? Oh, come off it, Yuki. Now you're just being ridiculous. Nobody went out through the balcony like that. Got it. Excuse me, Shinji? Oh, yeah? Well, 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 why do you need me all of a sudden? Do you remember telling me that morning how you thought you saw something on the side of the balcony while on your morning jog? Uh, uh, oh! <laughs> you mean that? I... Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I saw something like a big, long cloth being rolled up. Well, Emma, unless you're prepared to call Shinji a liar, wouldn't you say this proves someone could escape through the balcony at night? Sure, it would only be a one-way trip, but Hajime already proved it's possible to sneak back inside the mono cruise. As long as the killer snuck back inside the moment the cruise doors reopened, they wouldn't be noticed, allowing them to achieve a perfect crime. Perhaps what Big Bro saw was the killer quickly retrieving the rope-like thing upon their return. Seriously? That's just a hypothesis. You can't stake your claim like that. But Shinji said he saw it that same day, didn't he? Yep. That sounds like a plausible means of escape to me. Wow. So many pieces pointing at Emma. Surely even you must realize that this goes a bit beyond a series of coincidences, correct? Emma, did you really? No way. So Emmy really did. To sum up, the killer could enter Kokoro's room freely from that morning. So we had no choice but to recognize the disguised Kokoro as the real thing. And that was what made us believe that the case was a locked room murder when she unexplainably died. If you're not satisfied yet, allow me to point out another reason to doubt Emma. Since the performance, she's made quite a scene about having lost her appetite. She hasn't finished a meal since that day. Why do you think that may be? Because if she's the killer, she'd have to act as Coco. She requested to have food delivered to her room three times a day. As a result, Coco would have to be in her room during those periods. However, in order to not raise suspicion, him herself needed to join us for meals. So she came up with an excuse to leave the dining hall as soon as possible and set up the disguise. Come to think of it, that would also explain why she gave such specific times for food to be delivered. At the time, we all just assumed it was part of Kokodo's meticulous nature, but that too was a ploy from the disguised killer. By setting such precise times, she could decrease the risk of an unexpected situation. It all adds up. You really are all going to doubt me until the very end, hmm. Even despite overlooking a crucial detail? We've accommodated for every detail and covered all evidence. So please shut your mouth and stop putting up this pitiful defense. No, this detail is yet to be accounted for. I even mentioned it earlier. Allow me to illustrate the final point. On why it was completely impossible for me to disguise myself as Kokoro.
So you're saying I disguised myself as Kokoro? That's utterly impossible. I'm an actress, not a voice actor. I couldn't mimic her voice. Are you also going to ignore the height discrepancy? I'm over 20 centimeters taller than her. It'd be obvious that it wasn't the real Kokoro. Of course, the two inconsistencies could be explained by the disease. But would I really be able to impersonate her if it weren't for the said disease? Remember, she was diagnosed the morning after the performance. The culprit would have had to prepare the disguise the night before. How would the culprit have known about Kokoro's condition in advance? For without it, there was no other way to overcome the difference in height and voice. She had a rare endemic disease. How could you pop- No, that's wrong! Wait, Emma, stop. What was that about an endemic disease? Huh? What about it? That's weird. Those who weren't with us at Shobai's examination shouldn't have known that Kokoro was specifically suffering from an endemic disease. Those who weren't with us? Everyone except me, Ra Ra, Yuko, and you. Excluding Dr. Shobai and patient Koko, of course. You weren't there, Emma. So do you mind telling us how you knew it was an endemic disease? What are you talking about? You mentioned the disease in the dining hall, right? No. We only said that the disease was a rare one, not an endemic one. What? Not to worry, Emma. I'm sure you've heard it somewhere. Perhaps in Kokoro's bed as that very patient. Slip of the tongue so far in. Don't look now, but I think someone needs to fix their makeup. Is that sweat I see? Uh, oh dear, you, you can't take it back now. Well now, hang on. Let me clarify I was speaking hypothetically. She might have been suffering from an endemic disease. What? Seriously? You see, given the tropical nature of the islands we've been trapped on, my mind instantly assumed it was an endemic disease. I suppose that was my fault for assuming. But you really cannot convict me for a misunderstanding. Oh, come on! I work in journalism, and even I have to admit that's reaching! Assumptions or otherwise, aren't you ignoring the obvious? The issue isn't about the type of disease. It's about how I knew of it in advance, according to your theory anyway. It's a fair point. To fit with the timeline, the culprit would have been preparing the disguise long before Kokoro's diagnosis. And had Kokoro not fallen ill, the plan wouldn't have worked. There's no way someone could have predicted that. Do you understand now? With this, the entire disguise theory falls apart. Ah, yes, the infamous disease. Let's talk about that for a moment, shall we? Since Emma seems so fixated on it, and she is the ultimate actress, what if this disease was also another part of her act? What do you mean? Even if Emma was disguised as Kokoro, wasn't Shobai the one who diagnosed her disease? Oh, is that true? Then let's ask the man himself. The good doctor has been awfully quiet throughout this trial. Oh, he's still here? I thought that was just a cardboard cutout. Yoo-hoo! Anybody in there? I'm busy right now. Can I ignore you later? Some of us are actually getting on with more important shit. I'm running some numbers through my head. I've got more than 20 business deals I need to take care of, since I'm stuck wasting my life on this rock. This guy's unreal! Does he even realize how important this trial is? Shobai, I'm sorry to bother you, but we need to ask you something. Uh, now what? You guys have already figured out the killer, right? Hurry up and get to the voting already. At this point, you're just dragging things out. Nobody with a functioning brain is interested in this anymore. We're not voting until we've cleared up every shred of doubt, so stop whining and let me ask my question. Before the investigation had even concluded, you claimed to have solved the crime, remember? You deduced the killer almost immediately, noting that they had made a huge mistake. He said that? Shobai, this concerns you as much as it concerns us. Was your examination genuine? No, I might be a piece of work, 
But as a broker, I take great pride in what I do. And that includes what the job stands for. That checkup wasn't a favor. I was hired to do it. It was business. W what are you trying to say? Client confidentiality, kid. Never disclose any details about the client or the deal. As a broker, that's my number one rule. This is a class trial! Are you really gonna stick to that creek crap when your life is at stake? Of course not. Nothing's more important to me than my own life. But that doesn't change... Ah, screw it. I'm technically not breaking that rule by coming clean here. My client was Kokoro Mitsume, a woman who's now legally dead. And I ain't got no problem with snitching on a corpse. Shobai, wait! Kokoro Mitsume came to me with a request. The details are as follows. I was attacked by a void. I want to expose the void who attacked me, so please make a fraudulent examination for my safety. Finally, deliver said fraudulent examination to anyone who asks. And that's it. I said wait! What? So... Kokoro really was never sick at all? That's the big question, isn't it? After all, we now know that request was not made by the real Kokoro in the first place. You said that you knew who the killer was, Jobar. Were you able to infer that from the request alone? Yeah, there was a lot that wasn't adding up. Since I take pride in my client confidentiality, she could have easily spoken to me normally, when it was just us two. Yet, she still insisted on using her iPad to communicate. That ain't all, though. Emma Magarobi said something strange, too. Right after Kokoro Mitsume collapsed and you'd all gathered round her, she specifically said that her body was scorching hot. Why did she say so when Kokoro Mitsume was attacked by the Void and not suffering a disease? M maybe she got burnt with wounds. If you think about it, everything we did was based on Emma saying she had a fever. After taking her to the room, we only gave her medicine and placed a wet towel on her forehead. Which you'd only do if she was ill, not wounded. Well, well, well. It seems Emma had already begun baiting us. Starting small with a fever, making us believe she's sick, then having Shobai's phony diagnosis as the nail in the coffin. And of course, none of us ever remotely considered the possibility of the disease being fabricated. Wow, just wow. I wasn't even there and that story sounds suspicious. A healthy person suddenly gets paralyzed by an unknown endemic disease? <sighs> Seriously, guys? I expected more. I see. She carefully selected her words to make a subtle shift from healthy to unhealthy. That way, the diagnosis came as less of a shock. But ironically, that was what tipped Shobai off. What do you mean? The two statements directly contradicted each other. Emma Magarobi said it was a fever. Kokoro Mitsume said it was an attack. Granted, the disguise fooled even me at the time. But as soon as the body showed up, it all fell into place. It was Emma Magarobi in the dorm room with the disguise. Final answer. <gasps> we just wasted hours going back and forth, old man. Why didn't you say this earlier? I told you. I live by my own moral code, shorty. But since you guys have pretty much done the elbow work, and my client is legally dead, I figured I'd come clean. So there you have it. The last shred of doubt all cleared up. <laughs> and that's checkmate, Emma. No encore for you. No, wait a minute. You must understand. I'm not the killer. I'm sorry, Em, but I think you're the only one who believes that now. Even I didn't want to believe Kanadai at first. <laughs> My reasoning is perfect. There's no room for doubt. No, no we're not done yet. We haven't discussed how the killer dealt with the body. I was outside of the room when the body was discovered, so I couldn't have anything to do with it. Seriously, Emma? You could do that treatment in the morning. Once you were done with your disguise, there'd be no need to open the door for us. So you could do your job whether somebody else visited or not. My job? You mean the final step, yeah? That's right. Take the frozen Kokoro out of the refrigerator and cut off every hand and foot to hide the severed fingertip. If I did that, then the room would have been full of blood, wouldn't it? And yet, there was no such trace. Have you already forgotten her body was completely frozen? There'd be no risk of blood being spilt anywhere. At most, the flesh would have been disturbed. Please, I'm gonna be sick! 
Once that was all done, all you needed to do was return the refrigerator dividers back to their original position, then slap a liquid nitrogen label drum down as a distraction. Finally, get out of the room and mission accomplished. Hang on, that doesn't make sense. Kokoro was frozen by the instant freeze mode of the refrigerator, wasn't she? Not by the liquid nitrogen. Regardless of how long you freeze something, expose it to room temperature for a few hours and it'd melt on you. I do recall seeing some blood emanating from Miss Mitsume's severed limbs. Yeah, barely. If it was melting normally, we should have seen a lot more. Got it! Nikkei, that's because the killer used dry ice. Dry ice? When the body was first discovered, the room was unusually cold and covered in a thick mist. At first we believed it was the liquid nitrogen, but it was actually dry ice. We found a bag of it at the crime scene. She maintained the temperature with dry ice in order to prevent the frozen body from melting. How about it, Emma? Finally ready to give in? Emmy! What did I ever do to deserve this? I didn't do anything wrong. I just want a coke girl. These, these are all just coincidences. I didn't kill her. I swear to you. Um, can someone shut her up already? Give it a rest, woman. You lost. Ah! You believe me, don't you? I, I could never kill Kokoro. Please convince them for me. We're all walking into a trap. Better back off! Why won't you believe me? We're all going to die! I thought we were friends. I'm innocent! Hear me How out! How could you accuse me of such a so thing? cruel! You're all you so cruel! Consider. I'm innocent! Hear me Why out! Why won't you believe me? How could you accuse me of such we're a thing? We're all going to die! I thought we were friends. So cruel! You're all How so cruel! How could you accuse me of such a you thing? You must reconsider! You better back off! Why won't you believe me? We're all going to die! Is this the end? I'm innocent! Hear me out! Can't end like this! So cruel! You're all How so cruel! How did come to this? I'm innocent! Hear me Why out! Why won't you believe me? It can't end like this! Is this the end? I thought we were friends! It can't end like this! How could you accuse me of such a you thing? You must reconsider! You better back off! How did it come to this? We're all going to die! I thought we were friends! I'm innocent! Hear me out! You accuse me of such a so thing! Cruel. You're all so cruel! Mm. I'm innocent! Why Hear me out! Don't you believe me? I thought we were friends! We're all going to die! You must reconsider! So cruel! You're all so you cruel! Friends. I'm innocent! Hear me out! We're, friends. we're all going to die! I thought we were friends! So cruel! You're I'm so innocent! Cruel. Why Hear me won't out. you believe me? We're all going to die! It can't end like this! Why won't you believe me? I'm innocent! Hear me out! Friends. Is this the end? I'm innocent! Hear Why me won't out. you believe me? I thought we were friends! We're all going to die! You must reconsider! It can't end like this! I thought we were friends! I'm innocent! Hear me out! We were friends! We're all going to die! I thought we were friends! So cruel! You're I'm all innocent! So cruel. Hear Why me won't out! Won't you believe me? How did it come to this? I'm innocent! Hear Why me won't out! Won't you believe me? How did it come to this? I thought we were friends! You must reconsider! I'm innocent! Hear uh, me out! You! You better back off! How could you accuse me of such a thing? going to die! I'm innocent! Hear me out! You're you all so cruel! I thought we were friends! You must reconsider! You better back off! Is this the end? You must reconsider! I thought we were friends! 
How could you accuse me of such a thing? We're all going to die. How could you accuse me of such a thing? You better back off. We're all going to die. You must reconsider that we are afraid. It can't end like this. I'm innocent. You better back off. How could you accuse me of such a thing? to die. I'm innocent. How did you come to this? You must reconsider that we are afraid. It can't end like this. You better back off. Is this the end? How did it come to this? I thought we were friends. How could you accuse me of such a thing? You're all so cruel! What possible reason could you have linking me to Kokoro? This is the end! No! I just have one more thing I'd like to ask everyone. Has anybody here ever visited Kokoro with Emma? Huh? Oh, that's... I thought not. And the reason why? Because it's impossible. As we've agreed, the bed-ridden Kokoro was none other than Emma. If Emma ever came to visit, the bed would be empty. What are you talking about, Sora? I definitely visited Kokoro's room. Yuki, Teruya, you two remember, don't you? Oh, that's true. I've definitely gone there with Emma before. As she was leaving the dining hall, I caught up with her and suggested she join us. But did Kokoro open the door when you arrived? Uh, no. That was yesterday evening. The first time Kokoro didn't open the door for us. As I suspected. After all, how could Kokoro open the door while Emma was outside the very same door? Ironic, isn't it, Emma? What Yuki just said makes you even more suspicious. You always claim to have no appetite. So you could sneak out of the dining hall and eat your meals as Kokoro. And as a result, you never sat with Kokoro during one of her meals. Wow, you sure did care for her, Emma. A grand total of zero visits for your sick best friend. Didn't even visit her once. <laughs> More like she couldn't. Perhaps Mr. Maeda's suggestion caught her off guard. She certainly did seem in a hurry to leave that evening. It's over, Emma. There's nowhere to run. Finally given up? Good. It's time for your curtain call. Let's summarize the case once again and expose your crime. the truth of the case. This all started back during the performance Setsuka suggested. At some point during the performance, Kokoro suddenly collapsed. The culprit was the first to check her temperature, describing it as scorching hot to make us believe she'd fallen ill to some disease. While in reality, the killer had likely attacked Kokoro during the noise and excitement of the concert. We immediately brought Kokoro into her room. We used her finger to gain access to her eHandbook Plus. The eHandbook Plus can only be turned on by its owner's fingerprint. The killer made note of this in their plan. Feigning concern over Kokoro, the killer made sure to leave her room last. They needed to do this in order to subtly steal Kokoro's eHandbook Plus. As soon as nighttime arrived, the culprit returned to the scene after making sure everyone else was asleep. Since the eHandbook Plus's power was still on, they were able to re-enter her room. Knowing they wouldn't be interrupted at night, the culprit began their preparations. 
First, they tied up Kokoro and then cut off her fingertip. They needed this in order to have permanent access to her e-handbook plus. Once the bleeding had stopped, they stuffed Kokoro into the refrigerator. By removing all of the refrigerator's dividers, there was just enough space to store her body in. After placing her body inside, they set the refrigerator's output as instant freeze, with the intent to freeze Kokoro to death. Next came the disguise preparations. The disguise was the most crucial element to this murder, as they wanted it to seem as if Kokoro was alive for longer than she was. They stole the clothes Kokoro had been wearing, then set out to find a wig that emulated her hair. Fortunately for our killer, they'd taken note of the dressing room in the museum and planned to use it to their advantage. Naturally, people would be concerned over Kokoro, so the disguise had to be ready by the next morning. But the Monocruz had already closed its gates for the night. This left the killer with no choice but to create a makeshift rope and climb down the Monocruz from the fourth floor's balcony. Upon arriving at the museum, they took a wig that resembled Kokoro's hair from the dressing room. However, this would create a discrepancy with the dressing room's item list. So to accommodate for this, they destroyed the Yuki Ona statue and planted its hair in the wig's place. The destruction of the statue brought two benefits. Not only did it fix the discrepancy, but also made some fear the curse of the awakened Yuki Ona. Considering the body state when we discovered it, the implications of the curse only increased. The next morning, the Copa returned on board the monocruise right after the door opened, making quick work to remove the evidence at the balcony. They also used Kokoro's e-handbook plus to send a request to Shobai. I was attacked by a void. I want to expose the void who attacked me, so please make a fraudulent examination for my safety. Finally, deliver said fraudulent examination to anyone who asks. That was the request. Dr. Grumpy accepted this request, but began noticing something was off while talking with the disguised culprit. They made sure to remain silent even in front of Shobai himself, contradicting the killer's note of Kokoro having a fever the previous night. Perhaps he was able to deduce the killer based on these two inconsistencies. Either way, his false examination made us believe that Kokoro had begun to suffer from a disease. With us taking the bait, the killer no longer had to worry about the two biggest issues with their disguise, the height and the voice. The phony paralysis also allowed the culprit to request we bring them meals at three specific times a day. That was done to reduce the risk of an unexpected situation and to ensure they were in disguise for three set times. In an attempt to appear less suspicious, the culprit themselves faked a loss of appetite to provide ample time to disguise as Kokoro and eat her meal instead. And while effective at first, this ironically made them look more suspicious in the long run. Over the next few days, we continued to bring Kokoro her meals, unaware of the one beneath the disguise. We all continued to believe that, while unwell, Kokoro was still alive. But the horrid truth was that the real Kokoro Mitsume was slowly freezing to death in the refrigerator. Right before she perished though, she used the last of her strength to leave a dying message. She broke eight icicles that were created by the instant freeze mode, proceeding to carve F on the front and O on the back with her nail. Then, on the last icicle, she carved I instead of O, and penetrated the longest icicle through the I icicle to complete the message. There are eight icicles with the letter F, and conveniently also eight females. That would mean the tallest girl among all females was the one who killed I, Kokoro. After all, the culprit was indeed the tallest among the females. Without the dying message, we never would have been able to pinpoint the culprit. Eventually, the real Kokoro Mitsume finally died, leaving the culprit with no further reason to keep up the act. That night, the culprit grabbed a pack of dry ice and an empty oil drum the following morning with the intent to complete their crime. By slapping a liquid nitrogen label onto the drum, we don't make the mistake of assuming Kokoro had been freezing via the nitrogen, not the refrigerator. There was also the issue of Kokoro's missing fingertip. Had only that been missing, we'd have caught on much sooner. So to cover the tracks, the culprit cut off both her hands and feet. Not only did this work in their favor, but again, it brought more suspicion onto the Yukiona's curse. Finally, all that was left to do was cover the room and body in dry ice to force the body to melt at a much slower rate before fleeing the scene. The rest was like clockwork. 
Over time, we'd become suspicious that Kokoro wasn't answering her door, causing us to eventually discover the body. The culprit was incredibly cunning and careful. If it weren't for Kokoro's dying message, they may very well have gotten away with the crime. Perhaps this was karma for pretending to care deeply for her. The monster who had us all fooled. The one who murdered Kokoro. It can be no one but you, Emma Magarobi. said no one but you <laughs> it's a failure then <laughs> so be it <laughs> it seems you have all finally reached a conclusion. Just like the last trial, you only get one attempt at voting. Think carefully before you decide. Now, let us see if you have chosen wisely or poorly. Ladies and gentlemen, use the panel in front of you to vote for who you believe to be the culprit. Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What is it going to be? <laughs>